Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca saga. We are back at the 1914 uh, simultaneous exhibition in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And here Capablanca faces with the black pieces, which is kind of odd. I thought he would have the white pieces um, in, in all the games, but against Mr. Coria he has uh, the black pieces. And I almost wasn't able to find a photo of Mr. Coria. This is not a photo, it's, uh, it's uh, well, it's a portrait. Someone drew a nice portrait of him. And uh, I almost uh, used this one, but this is a different gentleman. It's a gentleman that uh, died in 1897, uh, Don, Don Valentin Fernandez Coria, but this is a different different fellow, uh, who, as you can see in the quote above the board, Capablanca mentions uh, that uh, Senor Coria is a fairly strong chess enthusiast, but as this was his first meeting with a front rank master, he allowed himself to be too impressed. Uh, what this means, we will see in the game, but before we check out the game, uh, I have a request uh, to those of you who, well, who are... So, sort of fluent in Spanish. Uh, we do have uh, some information available about Mr. Coria, uh, but it's in Spanish. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, also where I found this uh, very nice portrait of him. The first thing you will see in the description below uh, is a link to uh, that will lead you to some information about Mr. Coria. If you are a native Spanish speaker or you understand Spanish, feel free to translate it for us uh, and you know just uh, drop it down in the comment section. I will give you a heart to opinion or comment so we can all uh, enjoy some uh, information about Mr. Coria. Uh, that being said, let's check out this uh, very nice game. Uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as it's just uh, amazing. Uh, Mr. Coria opens with the white pieces and he plays e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now knight to c3. Uh, knight to f6, we have the four knights game, and now bishop to b5, uh, the Spanish variation of the four knights. Uh, bishop to b4, Capablanca continues in, in, a, in a symmetrical fashion. Uh, we have castles, castles, and now d3. Capablanca replies with d6, keeping everything symmetrical. And here we have bishop to g5. And now it's uh, one of those cases where uh, if you continue just uh, repeating uh, white's moves and playing, let's say, bishop to g4, you want to keep the symmetry uh, going, then white uh, can break the symmetry and gain a significant advantage. For example, after bishop captures, queen captures, uh, now you just go knight d5, uh, attacking the queen and also the c7 pawn after the queen goes back. Now you just eliminate the defender of the bishop on b4, captures, and now you grab the bishop. And okay, you didn't win a piece here. Black win, will win the piece back after a5. The knight doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, you have to capture on c6, and after queen attacks knight, uh, now both of black pawns are controlling knight's retreat squares. Uh, here white would just have to give up the knight for, for a central pawn after pawn captures. Uh, let's see, this, and we basically force this uh, endgame, uh, a queen and rook endgame where white is up two pawns uh, with a completely intact pawn structure and black has a, a well, a ruined pawn structure and he's down uh, two pawns, so it should be winning for white. Uh, so, after bishop to g5, of course, Capablanca does not uh, try to hold symmetry. He goes bishop captures on c3, not allowing any future knight d5 ideas. Uh, b captures on c3 and now queen to e7. Uh, and here, rook to e1. This was the sand standard theory even in those days, but here, knight to d2 by Mr. Coria. And okay, Capablanca goes h6, asks what do you want to do, and even uh, uh, here Capablanca suggested that, uh, not that obviously, uh, that uh, white ch should just give up both bishops uh, for, uh, for knights and play this uh, materially, ma you know, materialistically equal endgame where white would have a knight against the bishop. Black would be slightly better, but uh, Capablanca thought that this was the way to go. But okay, Coria goes bishop to h4. Uh, and now Capablanca no longer allows exchanges. He goes knight d8, prepares to bring this knight over to e6. Uh, we have d4, and now comes knight to e6. And now d5 is, is possible if Coria played it, but then comes a6, bishop d3, and knight to f4, where, where black would have uh, a very nice outpost for his knight. Uh, so here Coria plays the d captures on e5. Capablanca agrees that this is uh, much needed, uh, but it leaves white with a with a weak pawn structure on the queen side. So here Capablanca plays d captures on e5. We have bishop back to d3. Uh, if you want to activate the knight, you have to bring another defender to the uh, to the e4 pawn. Uh, knight to f4 by Capablanca and now knight to c4. And here rook to d8. And if you look at this position now, why Capablanca thought that uh, maybe it's just better to give up both both of the bishops for knights and play that endgame that we mentioned. Now it's very hard to find a move here for white. Uh, there's constant pressure against this bishop. The bishop is also pinned. You can't really move it. Uh, there's no really no good move white can make here. For example, if you try something like queen to f3, 
uh, then g5 uh, seems to be a very nice idea. Uh, bishop g3, and then bishop to g4. Now forcing the queen to move yet again. Let's say queen e3, and now you 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 could play this position, although it's it's very unpleasant for uh, for white. Uh, so after this uh, rook to d8, we have bishop captures on f6. But here. Capablanca just says, okay, you do uh, reduce the material on the board, but on the other hand, also Capablanca thinks that this is now just a winning position for black. Uh, we have queen captures on f6, and now, again, you don't really have a good move for white. You didn't really achieve anything by exchanging that bishop. Uh, if you try something like queen to f3, Capablanca mentions that knight to h3 check is a, is a very nice idea. Uh, of course, if, if you capture the knight, uh, if you capture with the queen, then bishop captures queen. If you capture with the pawn, then you lose the queen. Very nice. Uh, and if you go king to h1, then just queen captures would be sufficient, and Capablanca is uh, very confident that he would be able to win this game, uh, where white has a doubled c pawn and a doubled f pawn. So, after queen captures on f6, queen to d2 uh, by Mr. Coria, but now Capablanca just goes out uh, in an all-out attack with bishop to h3. And it's a wonderful idea. Of course, you cannot capture the bishop. If you capture it, then queen g5 or g6, doesn't matter. Forces checkmate. There's nothing to block check with. After king moves, queen g2 will be checkmate. So after bishop to h3, we have knight uh, to e3 by white, preparing knight to f5. Uh, and here, Capablanca plays bishop captures on g2. Uh, a very nice idea. Although he also mentions that knight to g2 would also be winning, uh, because after knight captures, queen f3. Uh, threatens checkmate. Now you do have to you do have to move. For example, knight h4. Uh, now you just get queen g4 check, and after the king moves, bishop captures on f1. Uh, we have rook captures, and now queen captures on h4. Uh, leaves black up the exchange in in a winning position. But uh, bishop captures is much more elegant and quicker. So this is what Capablanca plays. Bishop captures on g2, and now. Uh, again, you cannot capture it. If you capture queen g5, threatens checkmate, and there's not much you can do. You can play f3, but now, of course, you see how how black wins. Uh, uh, white prevented checkmate, but knight to h3 just, you know, picks up the queen. King has to go to h1, now queen captures on d2, wins the queen. Uh, so, after bishop captures on g2, Korea attempted knight to f5. And here, there are a lot, a lot of good, good moves for black. Queen g5 is a very nice move. Immediately capturing on d3 is a very nice move. Uh, but Capablanca goes for the for the tricky line. He plays bishop captures on e4, uh, removing the defender of the knight on f5, and now uh, and also putting uh, more pressure on d3. But there is an even greater threat, uh, which uh, Valentin Fernandez Coria, unfortunately for him, missed. Uh, he retreated with the knight, knight to g3, with a double attack against the bishop here. But here, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the best move for black. Maybe some of you even were able to do it without pausing the video. Uh, but for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are either an excellent uh, checkmater in one, or you are an excellent memorizer of thumbnails, as I also use this for a thumbnail. But the correct move is knight to h3, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show. And this is now checkmate. As the bishop controls this diagonal, it's check, and the king has nowhere to go. Uh, so yeah, just a, just a wonderful attacking, uh, attacking uh, game by Capablanca. Uh, now you uh, see what Capablanca meant uh, by by this, uh, that he's a fairly strong chess enthusiast, but as this was his first meeting with a front rank master, he allowed himself to be too impressed, uh, and then played, uh, you know, uh, on a few occasions continued just poorly, like we've seen in the previous game. Uh, there was no reason that rook h to f8, uh, you know, wasn't played for, for Capablanca's opponent, just doubled rooks on the e file for some uh, reason, and then Capablanca just created this wonderful initiative, which won him the game game in the end. But here you can see it's uh, it's not like today when grandmasters have uh, like simultaneous exhibitions. Today they, they play against weaker opponents and they just, uh, you know, crush everyone. Maybe there's like a draw there. But here you can see that uh, every opponent of Capablanca <laughs> was a very strong player, uh, especially uh, a player like Prokofiev, for example, who, who even won a game against Capablanca. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you are enjoying my coverage of the Capablanca saga so far. If you haven't been following it from the beginning, uh, the second link in the description below will take you to all the videos uh, that are so far included in the Capablanca saga. And once again, for those of you who are native to Spanish language, uh, feel free to check out the first link in the description. And, you know, if you feel like it, translate it for the rest of us so we can also, also enjoy a, a little bit more information about uh, Mr. Valentin Fernandez Coria. Uh, I would like to thank Raymond 
Young, Dejan Ristanovic, uh, Sylvain Deschenais, uh, Guillaume Albert and Andreas Martin for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the Capo Blanca saga, checking up on your suggestions and doing what we usually do here. Uh, thank you all. Uh, have an excellent weekend and I, I will see you soon.